Welcome to session number five, tutorial number two, develop project team process. In this video, we are going to look at how to develop project teams. If you ask yourself how a project team is developed, well, the answer to that question is not very simple. There are a lot of areas that you may have to focus as a project manager, the leader for the given team. There are a lot of considerations that need to be done in order to manage a team, a developer team effectively. If you are good at your soft skills, you could be at the right edge. You could be a project manager who can be great in mentoring, providing the right leadership, having empathy to understand what the team is going through, enabling the effective level of communication within your team. Do you evaluate the, the skill set, the soft skills particularly required for a given project context, and do invest your time developing your soft skills and ensure that these soft skills are being used in developing the project team. Another thing that you have to focus your attention on is encouraging the team. As a project manager, you need to encourage the people to try out the new concepts, to work harder, to work smarter and doing the right thing. And also, as a project manager, you need to maintain honesty and the trust. Trust of your team towards you will change the game. If you are not being able to communicate honestly, that might be a concern for the project team. They might not be at their best. Another thing that you have to focus on is the trust. Establishing the right level of trust is absolutely crucial for a high-performing team. Collaboration with the team is another critical factor. In the modern world, the teams and organizations move from command and control kind of behavior, command and control leadership to the collaborative leadership. You are a leader, but you have to be a collaborative leader. As a project manager, you also need to pay a lot of attention in creating the right culture within your project teams, doing the right thing, establishing the respect to each other, having fun during the work, but at the same time, focusing on UN goals is the right thing to do as a leader. You also need to motivate people. Obviously, there will be times where your project team members will be demotivated, frustrated, having their own personal concerns. So as a leader, you need to be someone who is good at providing the motivation, motivating the team, doing the right thing. Last but not the least, as a project manager, please do establish the ground rules. What is the level of punctuality we are expecting? What is the set of common ethics that we need to follow as a team. All these things will come in handy in creating a high-performing team. In order to develop a project team, there can be various things that you can do as a leader. One of the important areas that you can invest your time and effort is team building activities. Forming the project team into a cohesive group for the best interest of the project 
to enhance project performance. Example, work breakdown structure creation is a team building tool. When you create the work breakdown structure, you may allocate the work such a way it allows the optimum level of collaboration, teamwork, and innovation. Team building should start early in a project. Ideally, as we initiate the project, if you can have team building activities initiated, it can greatly help in order to build an effective team. If team does not trust the project manager, the project will suffer. So it's absolutely important that the project manager pay the attention in building the trust, establishing the trust, building the right team. In terms of developing a project team, there are a lot of models proposed. Out of these models, one model that's been widely adopted by the teams and organizations is Tuckman model. Personally, this is one of my favorites as well. In Tuckman model, it's proposed that any team will have to go through five stages. The first stage is the forming. In the forming stage, the team is just formed. People have put together and you're calling it a team. So at this stage, you see a lot of excitement around. A lot of anticipation happens because you don't know how the things exactly work. So you anticipate in doing a lot of activities. Also, you can see anxiety is around. People are not sure what other people's uh, what qualities they have, what procedures are to be followed. Therefore, there's a lot of anxiety at this stage. However, most of the team members will be very much optimum about what they can do, what they need to do as a project team. The second stage is storming. Now, as you set up the team, the form of the team, start working towards the goal, contradictions occur. At the storming stage, team is expected to go through a lot of conflicts, a lot of arguments, a lot of misunderstandings. Sometimes certain personalities may contradict as well. It's all okay. Some of the, the, the characteristics of storming stage would be there will be communication gaps from project manager to the team members, from team members to other team members, stakeholders to the team, all possible gaps might exist. However, the anxiety level should be reduced up to a level by this stage. Still, the team will be frustrated and disappointed due to various conflicts occur. The third stage is norming. So far, you have go, gone through two stages, forming and storming. After the storming, what happens is team starts norming, which essentially means you will become an effective team. You'll develop on the areas that you are lacking in the storming stage. Some of the characteristics demonstrated during this stage are you'll have a set of shared goals team will be totally fine in sharing the responsibilities. You'll also understand that it's, it's a shared goal that we all are working towards. Then you'll have team cohesion. Team is able to perform as a single unit. You'll also experience trade-offs. By doing certain things, you will always see 
trade-offs are available. You start to accept the people, accept the differences, accept the various contradicting concerns that you had in the previous two stages. So at this stage, pretty much the team start doing the work that they're supposed to do. When you look at them, you know that they are pretty much productive and effective in what they do. From norming, the next stage is performing. Now, this is where I see challenges. Most of the teams end up being at the norming, but they never try to go towards a performing stage because norming is already producing results. Norming is allowing you guys to be happy as a team. However, that's not the optimal performance level that the team can achieve. So during the performing stage, if any one team is at that, you will see a set of great behaviors. You'll see that the team works greatly together. That could be one of the best teams that you would see. Cohesiveness is improved optimally. And differences, working with people having different ideas and viewpoints is not a problem at all. So everything nails down to a learning. You also try to do a lot of new challenging experiments at this stage. And the value addition, value contribution from the team has increased optimally. So if the client looks at a performing team, client will be extremely happy. The management will be pleased to see such teams. So far, so we have gone through four stages of team building, forming, storming, norming, and performing. So at the end of the performing, the team will adjourn. That is when the, the project work is completed, the project team will dissolve. At this stage, the characteristics that you see Number one, separation, separation, anxiety. So you're anxious, you're anxious about the separation. You're wondering what is next, what would be my next assignment. You are somewhat curious and disappointed about the separation. It's not easy to go through a joining stage because if it's a lengthy project, long-term project you've dealt built, relationships, you would have been familiar with the team members, you would have made a lot of friends. So it's very uncomfortable for these people to separate and go into different assignments. You'll also see people with a lot of dissatisfaction. However, recognizing and rewarding will be part of a joining as well. For those who have done really well, you will reward, you will recognize them with different incentives, increments, bonuses, etc. In developing project teams, another thing that you have to work on is the training. I, I, I don't see any project, any project team who has not gone through a training. Almost all the projects will have to go through some level of training during the project life cycle. All activities designed to enhance the competencies of the project team members. Example, classroom, online, computer-based, on-the-job, etc. Training costs could be included in project budget if a training is required for a project. The training can be in two types. Number one, pull type trainings. These are the, the requests coming from the team itself. When the team figures that they lack on certain areas, they need to develop competency on a particular area, team may request a training. 
The second type is push. As a project management team, as a stakeholder sponsors, you may propose certain training programs for a given project team. These trainings are known as push trainings. Establishing ground rules is another important aspect for building high-performing teams. Establish clear expectations regarding acceptable behavior by the project team members. Define what is acceptable and what is not in a project. For example, project rules. Another example would be, what is the way of interruption in a meeting? Is using phones, laptops allowed in meetings, etc. So there can be various ground rules you establish in order to be effective so that you don't get to a situation where you contradict with your colleagues. Collocation is a great technique that is used for high performing teams. Placing many or all of the most active project team members in the same physical location to enhance their ability to perform as team. Example, a meeting room, war room, decreases conflicts, increases performance. Particularly in the agile world, this is the recommended approach. The best teams are co-located teams. That is because they have face-to-face -face interaction over any other media. When you're not co-located, you try to depend on various other communication channels, which might not be effective at all. Worst come worse, virtual teams face the biggest struggle in communication. So co-location is a great tool to build high-performing teams, and you may utilize that.